All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Um, this week, we're going to be masterminding the four different sale and settlement contingency addenda. Um, each one has a, a specific use. And obviously, the market right now is changing slightly, and these are coming up more in conversations. And we just want to make sure everybody is clear on the use for each one of these different forms. Um, Kong's going to, you know, take over here and go over these different forms and explain them to us. Okay. Hopefully, everybody got this um, package that I emailed out here about 15 minutes ago. Um, but I kind of tried to break down the four forms that generally are used when a buyer has a property that needs to settle before they can buy the next home, basically cashing out their, their equity um, so they can put that towards the next home. So there's four of them in zip forms that we have and they've been modifying them from time to time. But uh, the, the four main ones are one, the settlement of other property contingency, the sale and settlement, sale and settlement with right to continue marketing, and then the sale and settlement with right to continue marketing and a timed kickout clause. So the first one is pretty simple, the sale and settlement of other property contingency. A um, Couple notes on it that I have is use this form when the buyer's property is already under contract prior to making an offer, okay? So you eliminate the sale aspect of it. You just have to go to settlement, okay? One thing to note, though, is that the seller is the only one who can terminate the agreement of sale based on this addendum, okay? The other note that I have there is all other terms and, and conditions of the agreement of sale remain unchanged and in full force and effect. All of these forms will have that phrase at the end, and basically what that means is the Anything you have in the agreement of sale, as far as inspection contingencies, mortgage contingencies, whatever is in there that has a timeline that has to be accomplished, it's still in full effect, even though you have this contingency. Paul? Um, yes, Bob? Uh, I think you said to start off with that this was the sale and settlement. I just want to be clear. This is just for the settlement, correct? correct. Not sale and settlement. Yes. Okay. Sorry if I said sale and settlement. Just okay. the settlement of other properties. So okay. the Got sale it. has already occurred. It's under contract. Right. Good. Okay. So here's the form. And it's very simple. It's only half a page long. But uh, again, on paragraph two there, um, if you notice, I highlighted Seller may terminate the agreement by written notice to buyer and all deposit monies paid on account of purchase price will be returned to buyer according to the terms of this agreement of sale and this agreement of sale will be void. Buyer and seller agree to extend the date by which settlement must occur until seller terminates this agreement by written notice to buyer. So what that means to me, at least, is if you're under contract with this addendum, the seller is the only one that can terminate. And even if the settlement date has passed, it's up to the seller to terminate, not the buyer. Okay. Any thoughts on that from the group? Tim, any comment on that? No, the, uh, again, the seller in every one of these addendums, and I'm sure you'll go over it, especially when we get to the time kick out and the other ones, it's at their sole discretion. So right. when things don't work out with a buyer, please call us in advance. We just went over this with uh, an agent here recently because we don't want you to try to terminate an agreement that you don't have the right to terminate. So like, like Kong said, if, they, if it's contingent upon the settlement of this property and we miss a mortgage commitment date, then the seller has the right to terminate is what you're saying. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah. Or, you know, we'll go into it with another form, but uh, the inspections and everything, ordering a title, those are all things that are listed in there that have a definitive time frame, and you still have to accomplish those. Okay. So then we move to the next form, the sale and settlement of other property contingency. Okay. SSP, that's the uh, form name. Um, from PAR. So the pros on the listing side for this form, and I listed a pro for the listing side because we always think that this is a form that it's pro buyer, um, which it is because it takes the house off the market. But as far as on the listing side, it locks the buyer into selling their home for a fixed term. Okay. It also allows the listing side to be involved in the decision-making process of accepting an agreement of sale on the buyer's property. And then thirdly, no more showings. There are some sellers that don't like to have people going through their house. And with this particular form, it does stop marketing, okay? Now the con on the list side is that the house is off the market, okay? On the buyer side, the pro is that the home is off the market. A con on the buyer side is that the seller has a say in any bona fide offer on buyer's property. Okay. Um, couple tips for this form on the listing agent side, make sure you do a CMA on buyer's property and the home is sellable at list price on the addendum. Okay. Depending on the circumstance of the seller, make sure the date in paragraph five works for your client. And we're going to show you the form where, where that's at here shortly. Make sure the addendum is checkmarked on the last page of the contract. Okay. That actually could be either list agent or buyer agent, but one of you, between the two of you, make sure it's checkmarked so that it's part of the contract. Okay. And then lastly, for list agents, force buyer to start contingencies immediately, no delay. Again, I wrote in all other terms and conditions of the agreement of sale remain unchanged in, in full force and effect. You know, a lot of times people get cute and they'll write in, well, we don't want to start the inspections until the house is under contract. Okay. That's what I'm trying to go after is have the, the buyer agent and the buyers immediately start the inspections and, and anything else, okay? Um, as for buyer agents, a couple of tips for buyer agents on this form, give listing agent a CMA for buyer's property with offer, okay? When you submit an offer with this type of form, I know in this type of market, it's not very desirable um, but it could help if you show the list agent how sellable the house is at, at the price they're going to list it at, okay? Um, again, make sure the date in paragraph five works for the buyer, okay? Uh, the time frame in paragraph 4A should be one day, right? Type it in. Default is two days, and again, we'll go over what that is here shortly. And then lastly, do not execute a contract on the buyer's property until you go over with the list agent because the seller does have a say in that offer, okay? So here's the addendum. So first thing you notice that I highlight is paragraph number three there, buyer's property is or will be listed at or below blank for a term ending on or after whatever the listing contract says, okay? So as a list agent, I wanna make sure that the house is sellable and the buyer is not just overpricing it and, and keeping it um, on the market for an extended period of time. Because remember with this form, the seller's property is off the market. So how often is this form gonna be used, Colin? Um, it depends. <laughs> I've seen some some buyer or list agents take it because they either don't understand the form uh, 
So what is your recommendation to our agents? If you're on the buyer side, use it. If you're on the list side, negotiate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've only ever seen it used a couple of times and it is not in the seller's best interest. So if we're representing a seller and the seller absolutely doesn't want to show their home anymore, they're fine with this buyer, they're willing to give them a shot, they're willing to wait, that's fine. Right. But it's not in their best interest because now their home is off the market to other buyers. Whereas the other forms that you're gonna go over are more beneficial to the seller. So under 4A here, it says within blank days two, if not specified of receiving a copy of an agreement of sale for buyer's property, seller will inform buyer in writing that seller at seller's sole discretion, one accepts the agreement of sale for buyer's property or two rejects it. So see, they have a say in the contract that is submitted on the buyer's property. Just for an example, if for, if for some reason the seller says, well, you only got a $5,000 deposit on your house, you should ask for 10. Um, or the settlement date, that's a little too far out. Can you see if they can settle maybe three weeks earlier so we can settle three weeks earlier? Okay, that type of thing. So if this form is used and you are a buyer agent and you get an offer on the buyer's property, let the list agent be aware of all the terms, okay? And then under here, paragraph number five, after blank, insert a date, if buyer's property is not under an agreement of sale with terms acceptable to seller, seller may terminate the agreement by written notice to buyer and all deposit monies go back to the buyer. So again, that date right there on the selling side, you want it less. And on the buyer side, you want it to extend out as much as possible to give the buyer time to sell their home, okay? So recently I did submit an offer, uh, multiple offer. And unfortunately my buyer does need to sell their home and what I did in there to entice the seller was put in a date that was like only a week. So I said to the list agent that if the, our house doesn't sell within a week, you can terminate our agreement of sale. Okay. Any questions on this form? Very buyer friendly. Okay. I, like, I like the idea of what you just said in that last sentence that as an enticement and try to get this through, especially in the market that we're in right now, the, there is a good chance with the low inventory that the buyer's home is gonna sell. So if you just shortened up that period for a little bit, maybe you could get a seller to agree to this form. Yes. Yep, I mean, just one week, give us a shot and uh, see what happens, okay? The next form is the sale and settlement of other property contingency with the right to continue marketing. So on the list side, this is a very list um, seller friendly form. It allows the seller to continue to market the home, accept any offer and terminate current deal with just a written notice, okay? Seller has right to approve terms and conditions of offers on buyer's property. So those are two incentives for using this form on the uh, seller side. But the biggest thing is that they can continue to market, okay? Now, one thing I noticed that's a con with this form on the list side is that unlike the SSP form, there is no list price mentioned for the buyer's property. So the buyer can list it at any price, uh, that they want because, again, the seller can continue to market their home and if they get another offer, they can kick the buyer out, okay? So definitely there is no pro for a buyer to use this form, a buyer agent. Um, the downside to this form, again, buyer have no say and may lose the house at any time without knowing until it's too late because all the seller has to do is give them written notice. Um, 
then also the seller has right to approve terms and conditions of offer on buyer's property. Again, the recurring theme here is these documents, these addendums of sale and settlement or settlement of other property contingency, the seller has a say in the buyer's uh, contract for their home, okay? Couple tips for this form on the listing agent side, ask what the buyer's property will be listed at and do a CMA. Again, even more important than the first one because now the list price is not mentioned on the addendum, okay? A um, Couple of questions have come up. If this form is accepted, should we be listing and marketing the property as active or active slash contract in Bright? And I know everybody has their own different ways of doing it. And I've seen it um, in Bright several different ways. I guess the proper way to really market it is active slash under contract or contract. Um, I think it's A slash C is the uh, appropriate marking in Bright. But somewhere you have to note that the reason that it's listed because of that is that there is an active contract with the right to continue marketing, but you can kick somebody out, okay? I don't know, has anybody else used anything different? Or I, I've seen some people put, keep it as active, but then in the agent remarks, note that there is a contract under, um, it's under contract with the right to continue marketing. But my only problem with that is that a lot of agents don't read those remarks and they'll just you know, go about showing the property and then they write an offer and they don't realize that there's already an offer on it. So does anybody have any opinion on that or any recommendations? Well, my opinion on it is obviously, even with this particular form, the seller at any time they receive a new offer can get rid of this buyer. Right. You know, when we get into the time to kick out, they can, they also have their sole discretion on it. Although the buyer does have 48 hours or whatever a number of hours you choose to plead their case. Right. But, um, you know, yeah, it, 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 it can be an active pending, although it's nothing that needs any sort of time period. It right. can just immediately be kicked out. It's just nice for the other agent that's showing the property for them to know that there is a contract on it, so to speak, just because then they can coach their client. Hey, you may have to come in a little stronger because they do have a contract that they're willing to wait for, you know? So just something to, to think about there. Um, Again, make buyers start contingencies, inspections, mortgage application, et cetera, immediately. Okay. Hey, Kong. Yeah. Um, you can also mark in showing time under mm -hmm. showing instructions. That's something I do too, because that tends to be looked at more than the agent remarks. Very good idea. Great tip. Thanks, Kara. You're welcome. Uh, buyer agents, make sure addendum is checkmarked on the last page of the agreement of sale. Price the home to sell. Try to get away with the SSP form first because it takes the home off the market, okay? And then lastly, try to extend out contingencies so buyers do not lose financially when another offer is accepted. Inspections, title, et cetera. So when you're writing up this contract, I know a lot of agents wanna write it on the last page and say something to the extent of, inspection contingencies or contingencies do not start until buyer's property is under contract. But remember how I don't like to write out full sentences on that last page. What you sh should do is, for example, for the inspections, instead of making it the default 10 days, make it 21 days, okay? Extend that out a little bit, okay? So here's the document. Sale and settlement with the right to continue marketing. A couple of things I marked there. 
paragraph three, seller will immediately notify buyer in writing of the termination. Okay, so that's all you gotta do is just notify in writing. Four, seller's written approval of the terms and conditions of an agreement of sale for buyer's property. Okay, so again, as a buyer agent, send the contract to the seller so that they can approve it before you sign off on it. Lastly, number five here, seller may terminate the agreement, agreement by written notice to buyer and all deposit monies paid on account of purchase price will be returned to buyer according to the terms of the paragraph of the agreement of sale. So if the buyer's property is not under an agreement of sale by that date right above there, the seller may terminate, okay? But it's not up to the buyer or the buyer agent to do that. It's up to the seller, okay? Next form, and probably one of the trickiest one because it's also the longest one. Um, sale and settlement of other property contingency with the right to continue marketing and a time kickout clause, okay? And I wrote down here that really this form should only be used and accepted if buyer can buy another property without selling their current home, okay? It's just that they don't want to carry two mortgages, but they can afford it, okay? Now you can use it without the buyer being able to, to buy the property, but really then it's just a stall tactic, okay? As far as on the listing side, a definite pro for the seller is it allows the seller to continue marketing the home, okay? Again, seller is involved in the decision-making process of accepting an agreement of sale on buyer's property. And then the wording, seller's sole discretion, paragraph 7B. Okay, we'll go over that here very shortly. Definite con for the property is that home is still listed and marketed. Again, if the seller doesn't want to um, have people come through the house, et cetera, that could be a con for them, okay? Um, I'm sorry, on the buyer side, it's a con because the house is still listed and marketed. And then also a con for the buyer side is that seller's sold discretion, okay? Listing agents, depending on the circumstance of the seller, Make sure the date in paragraph six works for your client. Okay, we'll go over that here very shortly. Do a CMA on buyer's property. Make sure addendum is check marked on the back of the agreement of sale. Paragraph 5C, make sure time frame is as minimum as possible. Anything over 24 hours, probably too long. Okay, on the seller side. And again, make sure buyer starts contingencies, if any, inspections, title, et cetera. As for buyer agents, turn in offer with CMA for buyer's property. Okay, that'll help the list agent. Paragraph 5C, make sure time frame is extended out. So you see how on the listing side, you want it as minimal as possible. On the buyer side, you want it as fur further out as possible. Make sure buyer is aware of seller's sold discretion, okay? When you go over this form with your buyer, make sure that they know about that little phrase there, okay? Extend out contingencies so buyer do not lose money if seller executes right to time kickout. Use, fill in the blank days or dates. Do not write legal language. So again, don't write it on page 10, just, for the con contingencies like the inspections, write it out for 21 days instead of 10 days, okay? So here's the form, the sale and settlement with the time kick out and continue marketing. R 
right here under seven, if seller receives a bona fide offer from a different prospective buyer with terms acceptable to seller, seller will promptly notify buyer in writing of seller's receipt of that acceptable offer and seller's intent to terminate this agreement of sale within blank hours. So again, I mentioned in there that if you're on the list side, you want that as low as possible. It's recommended specified 24, but you could put in there two hours if you want, or one hour, okay? Now on the buyer side, you want that extended out. And I know a lot of buyers want to put in 48 hours, so they want two days, okay? Uh, buyer, now if the buyer does, within 24 hours of receiving written notification that seller has received a bona fide offer with terms acceptable to seller, the buyer then will provide one, written proof that buyer's financial ability to proceed without the sale and settlement of buyer's property, or two, a copy of an agreement of sale for the buyer's property. So if for some reason the buyer's property goes under contract within that time frame, then submit it to the, to the seller, the list agent. Number one, written proof of buyer's financial ability, that should have been turned in with this form in the form of a pre-approval that states that the buyer doesn't have to sell their house. Okay. Now, part B, within two days of receiving, of receiving written proof of buyer's financial ability to proceed without the sale and settlement of buyer's property or receiving a copy of an agreement of sale for buyer's property, Seller will inform buyer that seller, comma, at seller's sole discretion, so this is entirely on the seller without any opinion from the buyer side, one, accepts the written proof of buyer's financial ability, two, accepts the agreement of sale, or three, they can terminate the agreement of sale. They can say, I don't like whatever you presented me. I have a cleaner offer on the other end. I'm going to go with the other offer. Okay, and that's one thing you, as a buyer agent, when you're using this form, you have to tell your buyer that, hey, even though we're, we're using this time kick out, once the time goes by and the seller looks at your ability to buy it without selling your home, um, they can still terminate our agreement of sale. Okay. And lastly, I highlighted seller's right to market the property will cease upon seller's acceptance of the written proof of buyer's financial ability to proceed without the sale and settlement of buyer's property or seller's written acceptance of the agreement of sale for buyer's property. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Just making sure again, does everybody understand that these forms give the sole discretion to the seller? That's just what you have to remember. It's nice for you as a buyer's agent where the buyer, let's say is tied up and you're not out showing them houses anymore, but the decision is really up to the seller. So even though the buyer might semi think that he's got the property under control, he really doesn't because it's up to the seller's sole discretion. Kara, any questions? Okay. Yeah, if you have any questions with these forms, please feel free to give us a call and, and talk to us and we'll go over it and brainstorm with you. Um, especially if you use it, it gets accepted. And then for whatever reason, one party gets antsy about it and just wants to back out. Uh, we just had a situation where the SFP form was used, which was incredible in itself that a seller accepted it in this uh, market. But the buyer listed their property for sale and they were not getting any showings. 
So they wanted to back out of the deal. And after reading this form between Brooks, Tim and I, uh, again, it's determined that the seller is the one that can terminate, the buyer cannot. They still have to make a good faith effort to continue to market their home at that price that was agreed upon in the addendum, okay? So that's what they had to do. So they, they just can't back out. I think Seth has a question or comment. Morning, friends. Morning. Hey, I, I just wanted to, um, I think Kong did a great job in um, telling us that we should not use extra language in the agreement of sale stating that that if the inspections and deadlines start at a later date that kong's idea of just extending the actual day from 10 to 21 or so forth is a great idea because i think that we have a tendency to um, recreate the wheel again and put in extra language so i just wanted to point that out i I think that was a great idea that Kong had and just extending the dates. Yeah, if you if you extend it out, let's say 21 days, and then you put the buyer's home on the market and it sells on the first day, remember we can renegotiate things because the seller has the right to approve of the agreement of sale on the buyer's property. And not just that, but he has the ability to say, well, all right, I'll accept this, but you need to move up your inspection contingency. Anybody else? And that was a lot of language there to cover. And Kong, just to, if I can, this is Bob, if I can, just to uh, give you an idea of uh, 7A, uh, that uh, time frame that you put in there. We go back, I go back a few years and I can remember uh, a couple of instances where we, uh, back then, we used to get referrals that came in frequently. And uh, so if you had a 48-hour uh, kickout and a referral client was coming in from out of state for the weekend only, they had a real problem because they couldn't accept his offer or he wanted to buy a house that weekend. And... Uh, uh, he couldn't buy the one that he wanted because they had that 48 hour kick out. So your two hour is really uh, right on target, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember those days, sir. <laughs> You're not old enough. All right, Brooks, do you want to take over and yeah, tell everybody um, about next week? So we don't have the topic yet for next week, but um, we'll certainly push that out here as soon as we have it, just to generally kind of recap everything that went over, just to be clear. Um, the sale and settlement form, you know, you're going to want to negotiate that for your buyer's stance. Um, Sellers obviously want the right to continue marketing. They're going to negotiate that end. Typically, what it lands on is this last one we talked about with the time kickout, which definitely gives, as my uncle said, the seller the sole discretion and, you know, the power is still in their court, so to say. But um, it at least gives your, your buyer um, the ability to adjust or renegotiate at that point too, in my opinion, if they hear another offer is coming in, maybe they did receive a contract on their property and they want to increase their offer by $10,000. And maybe that's enough to, you know, differentiate them between the other offer the, the seller received. You yeah. never know. But um, yeah, again, that's probably the one you're likely going to use in most instances. So with that uh, being said, we'll wrap it up. Hope everybody has a great week and we'll shoot out that next topic when we have it. Good job, Kong. Good job, Thanks. Rex. Thank you. See you yep. guys. See you guys.